Hi YouTube and welcome to the latest video coming to you from All Things Hitman. My name is Reaper One. In this video, I wanted to discuss my perceptions of IO Interactive's marketing decisions of late. Uh, my thoughts have kind of evolved over the last few weeks, particularly as of tonight, I saw a really cool community post on the Hitman 3 subreddit or the Hitman subreddit. And uh, I wanna use my platform here in the Hitman community to help draw attention to this particular post. I also kinda wanna channel it as a message to IO Interactive. So yeah, that'll be the general gist of this video. I have not been a fan of IO's recent trajectory with the whole Seven Deadly Sins DLC. Uh, I strongly disagreed with the price tag that they stamped on that content. You can check out a video I released a few weeks ago. So if you want to find out my thoughts in further detail about that topic, feel free to watch that video. We're in the twilight stage of this trilogy of the world of assassination. I, I've been really disheartened by the direction that IO Interactive have taken, especially since they released the uh, Seven Deadly Sins DLC. Anyone that follows me on Twitter will know that I've been very vocal about criticizing it. I don't have any regrets doing that. I'm not normally one that likes to stir up conflict, but this is something I was very passionate about. This was a point of view that I really wanted to get across. I ended up venting 10 to 15 tweets about the whole DLC thing. It wasn't intentional. I only ever meant to like tweet about it once, maybe twice or three times. I just couldn't get over the fact that, that they'd done this, that they'd released seven escalations and put a 45 Australian dollar price tag on it. I just, it just really didn't sit well with me at all. One of my most recent tweets about it, Travis, he's the uh, primary communications manager at IO Interactive and he actually responded to one of my tweets surprisingly. So that was really cool to kind of at least get some acknowledgement in regards to community disappointment at the whole Seven Deadly Sins DLC and also just other things that haven't been addressed. It just doesn't sit well to finish the trilogy like this to, you know, cause it's in its last days. We've only probably got another year at most of Hitman 3 content coming out from IO. This has been a golden era of Hitman. Like we're probably never going to get a, a period of time as a community like this, or at least we won't again for a very long time. I don't know why they're choosing to end it this way. I don't know why they're choosing to ignore the community. At the very least, they've now acknowledged that a lot of the community are not happy with the DLC and also just certain other aspects of the game that they are still not addressing. Back to the main point of this video, which is to draw people's attention to a certain post that I mentioned earlier in the video, and that was a fan-made roadmap of what would be a hypothetical roadmap that IO could release if they change up their release schedule format a little bit. This fan-made fictional content got me more excited than any roadmap IO has, has made since Hitman 3 launched. So I'm gonna bring it up now and we'll discuss it. Okay, so this is it, the ideal roadmap, IOI, take note. As you can see, fan-made roadmap, but it just encapsulates everything that the community would like to happen. You've got a prominent community member featuring cameoing as an elusive target. I love the fact that they've featured Big Mooney. There's not many other more deserving figures in the community. That would be a brilliant way to put a new spin on the elusive target format. Instead of getting recycled Hitman 1 targets, we actually get, say, members of the community being featured as an elusive target. Like, excuse my French, but how fucking cool would that be? That's what got me so excited about this fictional map. <laughs> You've obviously got other aspects, other crucial changes that the community's been very vocal about. And that is, at the very least, giving deluxe owners of the game some kind of discount on the horrendously expensive DLC, the Hitman 1 elusives, the Legacy elusives, um, making that what has long been stale and time-limited content permanent, making it official, fixing bugs that should have been fixed a long time ago, actually polishing the, the game. I love this idea of a 007-themed content pack like how awesome would that be i'm frothing over this content and it doesn't even exist <laughs> and then of course you've got um featured contracts going back to the community getting rid of these gaming media companies that
that, that don't know how to make contracts and that don't give a crap about Hitman. They're only there because they're getting paid to help promote the game. I feel like IO Interactive are sacrificing quality content like this purely just to make a quick buck. I understand that, you know, they're an expanding company. They've got very, very, very ambitious goals. They've just opened up a, a third studio in Barcelona, which is really, really cool. I think that's fantastic and good on them. Congratulations, IO. But at the same time, I don't think you need to fund that expansion by crippling the quality of your content and in the process, especially with this Seven Deadly Sins DLC, ripping off your, your loyal fans. Excuse the pun, I don't think you need to sell your soul to the devil to expand your company because you, you've, you've proven time and time again throughout the last five years and even before that, you're an organization of extreme stature. You've been through a lot. I really don't believe you need to resort cheap marketing tactics such as this to fund your, your future expansion and your future ambitions. You got through Squexit by delivering quality content, by believing in your community. I believe you can do the same to become one of the best developers in Europe. Your community will believe in you and they'll get behind you. I'll get behind you. If you can deliver the goods that have been displayed by this fellow Hitman fan, I would be drawing a lot of inspiration from this fan-made roadmap. This is what the, the community wants. If you get on board with this type of content, the community will be behind you 150%, 470%. We will rally behind you and we'll support you to the very end. God forbid, to the day you close your doors for good, we will support you. If you, if you treat us right, and deliver quality content like this. I mean, look how much love it's getting. I'll refresh the page. Let's see if it has even more likes. There you go, climbing all the time. Just imagine if this was a real roadmap. It would actually make me excited about Hitman again. I I'd love to play the Seven Deadly Sins DLC. It actually looks kind of cool. It's an interesting concept, but on principle, I still refuse to buy it at its current price tag. I refuse to buy it. If you adopted some of these principles, not only would you redeem yourselves with the, the rocky launch, server issues, and this extortionate DLC, you'd have the community wholeheartedly behind you again. That's what you truly need to move forward, to expand. You wanna become the best developers in Europe. You need a solid community behind you. If you allowed Clemens and Travis to launch IO Monthly again, make us feel a part of the process again. Listen to us. Obviously, we wouldn't expect every roadmap to be as exciting as this one, but this is a great benchmark to aim for. This is something that would get the fans really, really excited again. And again, I'll reiterate, I was more excited to see this fan-made map that is actually advertising fictional content than I have been for any of your own roadmaps. And that's saying something. The fact that I am more excited about fictional content is saying something. I firmly believe you guys are capable of delivering content that's not only on par with this, but even better. I truly believe that you, you can produce it because you've done it time and time again in the past. I just think you've let the ball slide a bit. Have a breather, rethink everything, and, uh, and most importantly, listen to your community. Listen to us. Appreciate what we have to say. Well, that's all I really had to say in this video, guys. Hopefully I see it. I hope they uh, appreciate the, the spotlight I've tried to, to put on that fantastic piece of fan-made artwork there. You know, they've obviously created that fictional roadmap in the hope that you'll see it, in the hope that you'll become inspired by it. You know, the amount of time they've put in to create it, that says something about their passion for the game and their passion for the franchise. Please, please listen. Please pay attention. Let's finish this trilogy with a bang. Let's make it the best that it possibly can be. Let's not wrap things up with microtransactions. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. You can even subscribe for more Hitman-related content. Uh, if you enjoy my content enough, to show a little bit of support, why not become an All Things Hitman channel member? Just a few dollars a month. I've got a Hitman podcast with my co-host, Timothy Mark, called the Hitman Hideout. Any money you pledge every month goes towards uh, the costs of hosting that podcast on premium listening platforms. So it goes a long way, does a lot to help us and our endeavors to, to keep the discussion surrounding Hitman going. If you don't want to support the channel on a monthly basis, you can now also make a one-off donation through Streamlabs. That's also highly appreciated. Please leave a comment. 
please let me know what your thoughts are on the whole topic of this video. My name is Ben Reef One. That's all I really have to say in this video. So thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all sometime soon.